Hello again. For this video, I need to talk about something related to the mastery test. Um, I've had a couple of videos now trying to explain this test to you, tell you what it's about. Again, it's, it's this um, test that it's mostly writing an essay that you have to pass in order to move on to the next level uh, writing courses. Um, so it's very important. Um, we want to make sure that we're prepared for it, that we do our best on it and everything. Um, I currently, right now, have a practice test posted for you that I don't think anyone's submitted yet. But you have until uh, the night of Wednesday the 13th at 11.59 p.m. You have until then to do that practice test. I would really encourage you to do that. Uh, I am going to count it towards a grade for our class just as like a participation grade. But that's also going to allow you to get some feedback from me, you know, to help you prepare for, for the mastery test. Because, again, you need it to pass this class. In fact, if you don't get the required grade on the mastery test i am actually required to give you an f for the class um so again very important go back and watch my other couple of videos on the mastery test if you haven't done so yet but um I, there's one other thing i need to talk about here with that so part of the mastery test is that there are there's an article you have to read and then you have to write an essay where you're going to use that article as kind of an outside source you're going to use it as like a backup to the argument you're going to make in the essay the, art, the essay is not only about the article. You shouldn't be answering it like a short answer question that's about the article. You're writing your own essay with your own thesis, but you're going to use the article as like an outside source that's going to help you to make your argument. Your thesis is the main thing, but the outside source can help you to do that. Okay, so I have posted, they've given me two articles. One of them is going to be actually used for the test. So there's two articles posted under this week's Moodle page. Um, for the, the 11th to the 15th, there's two articles posted there. It says Article A and Article B. You need to read both of those, and you need to annotate both of those, okay? And then you have to submit those annotations to me on Monday uh, the 18th, on, on this coming Monday. Those are due. So you've got to, those articles, again, they're posted on Moodle. I'm going to send them to you in an email as well. But you, you should download those articles, and then you can either print them out, and you can annotate them with a pen, or something and then you can take a picture of that and submit it through Moodle for me to look at or you know you can you can yeah scan it or take a picture of it or something and then upload that for me to take a look at on Moodle or if you have um, you know if you have some kind of way of, of uh, annotating things online where you can like highlight or, or you know make a little comment in the margin or something like that that's fine too I can take a digital version of it but if that's, you know, if that if, if you're more used to doing it by hand, which is the way I always do this stuff, but, you know, maybe you guys are better with the computers than me, uh, you can do it either way. But I need those two readings for you to annotate them and then submit them to me so I can, like, review those annotations. That's part of the test. So, again, the articles are posted. I'm going to send you an email. So, here's, again, I, I posted a video about annotating earlier in the semester, but I'll just touch on some of the stuff that I said, um, again, here. So what we're doing with when we're annotating is we're trying to stay engaged with the test, uh, the text. That's the main thing. One of the biggest problems I think for students when it comes to reading for school is that we just lose focus. You know, um, I've talked about this before: the necessity to kind of quiet your mind, to block out any outside stuff going on, to sort of control your thoughts, right? Because if you're reading something and you might genuinely be reading it, you know, you're reading all the words, you're trying to your best to do it. But if your mind is thinking about something else, if you're thinking about what you're going to cook for dinner, who you need to call later, all of the stuff you have to do tomorrow, if you start thinking about that stuff, you're not going to retain what you're reading. It's just going to go straight through you, you know, um, and, and, you, and you'll, re you'll, you'll finish reading it, you'll spend time reading it, you're doing your homework, and then you're going to go, I have no idea what I just read. So the point of annotating is to help you stay engaged with the reading, to make sure that you only need to read it once, right? This is, I feel like annotating, it seems like extra work, or it seems like, um, something that's going to make your life harder, but I, I think it can actually save you a lot of time if it, you can get to a place where you read something once and, and you kind of, you, you can have some takeaways, you know, you can uh, be able to explain what it was about. You can kind of sort of retain what you've read. That can save you a lot of time and can make your homework life a lot more efficient. So a couple of things that, that I would encourage you to do, underline or highlight. You can either, you know, if you're using a physical highlighter or, or if you can highlight on the computer, um, that's one way to approach it. So some, some things that you might want to highlight, number one, the thesis, the main argument. What's the main point of the article? 
What's like the thing they're trying to convince you of or the main takeaway for the audience? I would always try to highlight that. If there's any sentence that you read where it's like, oh, this is what they're trying to get at here. This is the main thing. I would try to underline that, highlight it, make sure that you mark that. Other things to look for, the most important pieces of evidence. Um, if, if, you know, if they are making an argument or they're trying to convince you of something, what are, what are their like most convincing pieces of evidence to try to, to make you believe their argument, try to get them on their side, on your side, try to get you on their side, um, highlighting or underlining any like pieces of evidence like that, I think can be really helpful. Um, other things that I do when I'm annotating a text is like, I'll put a question mark if there's something I don't understand, or if there's a word, I don't know if there's like a vocabulary word that I should maybe look into, I would put a question mark next to that. And, you know, and if it's something for class, that would also remind me to, like, ask the teacher about it, you know, if there's something I didn't get, so I, I can know, um, you know, to try to get more clarity on that with the teacher. Other things that I try to do, so, you know, when I'm doing it by hand, I'll underline, like, the stuff I think is important, but then, like, the thesis or, like, whatever I think is the most important, I'll use, like, a star, because if you underline too many things, it kind of makes it useless, like, you might as well underline, if you're going to underline everything, you might as well underline nothing, um, so you kind of want to be able, able to designate like what's the most important, what's something I want to be able to find uh, again very easily. I use a star to do that. Uh, another thing I would encourage you to do is to make like just very brief comments in the margins, like just like um, agree or disagree is something I always try to do. Like if there's a point that they make that I think is a really good one or a really strong one, I just put like agree next to that or, you know, underline it and then also put agree next to it. Or if there's something that, that I'm just very against, I'm like, no, this doesn't make any sense to me. I think this is a bad argument. I'll underline that and then I'll put disagree next to it. So this is the kind of stuff that I'm going to be looking for you to do in your annotation. Underlining, uh, question marks if you don't understand, agree or disagree. Um, you know, if you want to put a star or something like that. But yeah, mostly you want to look for what's the main idea of it? What's the most important pieces of evidence? That's the kind of stuff that I'm going to be looking for you to mark up on the text. So again, you're going to need to take those two articles either print them out and write on them by hand or get them on the computer and underline stuff, make little notes, uh, whatever. I want to see it annotated in a way that shows me that you can identify the main argument, the most important, important pieces of evidence, and that you've like retained what the article's about and what the most important things in the article are. I want to see you kind of sifting through what's the what's important here and what's kind of just details and stuff. Details are good. It helps an article. It, you know, it's not that they're unnecessary, that they still like add flavor to the article and help the argument and everything. But the most important stuff is what I want you to be underlining um, or starring and, you know, uh, or highlighting. So yes, those are going to be need needed to be submitted to me by Monday the 18th. And again, it's part of this mastery test. It's super important. So let's make sure we get that done. All right. Email me with any questions and I'll talk to you later.